Chapter 179, 1987 In the spring of 1987, Remus had a spot of luck. One of Grant's old student friends now worked in the law department at UCL and managed to swing a job for Remus doing some freelance editing. This was a revelation. He could do the bulk of it at home and then just take it up to Holborn once it was done. He did need to get a national insurance card and a muggle bank account, but that was easy enough with a few tactical glamour spells at the bank. Remus only cheated a little bit, using magic to help him read and correct spelling, but he found the work surprisingly enjoyable and even started a little business marking exam papers for some of the local muggle schools. Don't know how you can concentrate so long, Grant shook his head at the pile of papers Remus had amassed one evening. I'd go out of my mind. It's interesting, Remus shrugged. I never got the chance to learn any of this stuff. Have you heard of quadratic equations? Grant laughed at him fondly and ruffled his hair. Grant himself had been going from strength to strength at work. He loved his job and put in extra time on the weekends and evenings whenever he could. The boys Grant worked with were every bit as much troubled as the St Edmunds boys. But that only seemed to spur Grant on. He was always telling Remus about one kid or another who he'd had a little victory with, a passing mark at school, a week without a fight, time off their sentence. Somehow, Grant knew everything about everyone, his memory limitless, his capacity for pride and encouragement unbelievable. Got to cut that article out of the Observer, he might say one evening. Sounds right up Alfie Street. Or, staying late tomorrow, with any luck, promised the lads we'd have a kick about if none of them get written up. When he was feeling insecure, sometimes Remus would wonder if Grant was only with him because he too was a troubled boy, that Grant was just trying to save him, like he tried to save everyone. He lived for a good cause. Ah, shut up, Grant would grin at him if he raised these concerns. I've wanted to get in your pants since we were teenagers. It's got nothing to do with your tortured past. And then Remus would remember that after all, Grant was a care home kid himself. Something which was easy to forget, because, unlike Remus, he bore it lightly with a casual shrug of acceptance. Poverty, lack of education, mistreatment. None of this weighed Grant down in the same way. At least not on the surface. But Remus had been wrong about people before. As a result of Grant's dedication to his work, and Remus's own relatively low-impact employment, Remus found himself in a position he had never been in before, having both free time and a bit of disposable income. He didn't need much, the flat was paid for, their furniture was serviceable, and they could generally afford to keep the electricity and hot water on. He bought clothes every once in a while, but he hardly shopped at Harrods. There was the drink, but he reasoned that, as he didn't smoke any more, he could put his tobacco money towards booze. What Remus did enjoy was going out for walks. Not countryside rambles, he got enough of that on full moons, but wandering through London by himself, enjoying the streets, the people. He even visited free museums in London. The National Gallery, the Portrait Gallery, the v a the British Museum. He became quite cultured, in fact. And if his hip hurt, which it often did now as he entered his late twenties, He could easily hop on a bus. So, one summer's day, he had completed all of his marking, and there was nothing on TV. Grant wouldn't be home for hours, so he mooched around the Science Museum for an hour or so. Funnily enough, it put him in mind of Arthur Weasley for the first time in years. The daft old bugger would love all of these machines, the pistons, the light bulbs. He could just picture Arthur's face as he watched the perpetual motion machine, and Remus smiled to himself quite out of the blue. How was Arthur, and his wife, the Pruitt sister, and their red-haired brood? It had been too long now to get in touch, Remus knew, and he wouldn't know what to say, even if he did. Still, thinking about the Weasleys hadn't hurt, which was the main thing, and perhaps thinking about them put him in a different mind frame for the afternoon. More alert, maybe, or nostalgic. It couldn't be a coincidence that he bumped into an old friend only two hours later, He was nearly home, only a street or so away, shuffling anonymously through the bustling Chinatown alleyways. In fact, he was just about to pass the place they'd got their TV from, the old sauna off Old Crompton Street, 
Remus always blushed a bit, walking past it, and then chastised himself for being such a prude. He ducked his head slightly as he approached, and, horror of horrors, just as he was level with the door, somebody stepped out of it. Remus had to stop short, as not to bump into them. They turned and stared up at him nervously. Remus gasped. Christopher! The man blinked, horrified. He was red-faced with dark brown eyes that were rather small and watery. He was a bit chubbier than he'd been at school, and his hairline was receding slightly at the temples. But it was definitely him. Remus? Hi! It's been... not since... Yeah, how are you? Remus winced as he asked the question. Christopher was clearly uncomfortable, and why shouldn't he be? He hadn't seen Remus in almost ten years, and now here he was, looming over him outside a gay sauna. Oh, you know. Christopher looked at his feet. He was wearing muggle clothes, a stonewashed denim shirt with the buttons done up unevenly, dress trousers and a blunt orange waistcoat with green embroidery. In short, he looked as dreadful as every pure-blood wizard who tried to pass as a muggle. As always, Christopher's general air of hopelessness endeared Remus to him. Uh, Remus rubbed the back of his head. Do you want to, um, go for a coffee? Or a drink? Catch up a bit? Okay, then. Christopher looked up at him cautiously. Remus took charge from that point, because it was clear that there was no other way. He led Christopher further up the street, back towards Tottenham Court Road. There was a cafe on Denmark Street that was cheap and anonymous, and for some reason Remus wanted to get further away from home. Here we are, he smiled kindly, holding the door open and pointing out an available table. Christopher said nothing and sat down, fidgeting a bit. Remus wondered if this was all a terrible idea. Maybe Chris didn't want to speak to him. But he went along with it, and offered to pay when Remus went to order their first coffees. Do you live nearby? Christopher asked, finally, still not fully making eye contact. Yeah, Remus nodded. Not far. You? Oh no, out in Hampshire. I just come to the city for work and... Well, where do you work now? Remus asked, desperate to spare him from any further embarrassment. Gringotts, Chris said, glancing up at the waitress as their coffees arrived. He put three sugars in his, and as much milk as he could. Remus realised he hadn't even asked if Chris liked coffee. Very swish, Remus smiled. Always knew you'd do well. I suppose. Still read lots. When there's time, work keeps me busy, and other responsibilities. You know how it is. I thought we were overworked during newts, but Hogwarts was a holiday compared to real life. Remus chewed the inside of his cheek, just because that was very true. He didn't want to get upset about it. How about you? Christopher asked, clearly trying not to grimace as he sipped his coffee. What do you do now? This and that. Remus shrugged. I haven't exactly got a career. Oh, what a shame. Remus shrugged. It's fine, I manage. There was an awkward silence. Remus wanted to ask about the sauna, but he knew better. Grant would probably ask. But then Grant had a way of putting people at ease which Remus didn't. He just drank his coffee quietly and wished he'd suggested a pub instead. I thought you died, Christopher said suddenly. Remus nearly choked. He set down his coffee. <clears throat> you... There were so many rumours back then. You remember what it was like. And then there were all these names. And when I... Th when I... When I saw what happened to Lily and your friend James, I just thought... Especially when it came out that Sirius Black was the one who did it, I I just assumed. Remus breathed in sharply and waited for the pain to retreat. When it did, he exhaled slowly and said very evenly, No, I wasn't there that night. I had no idea what Black was up to. No one did. He was always up to something, Christopher said darkly, and with his family. I suppose it didn't come as much of a surprise, really. No, Remus said, not really knowing what he was saying any more, just trying to ignore the roaring in his head. I suppose not. 
I was so upset about Lily, though. She was so kind. Do you know where Harry is now? The boy who lived? Rumour shook his head. He drank more coffee. Probably not a brilliant idea to add caffeine to his already speeding heart rate, but he was trying to be as normal as possible. If you weren't dead, Christopher continued, I thought you just might not want to talk to me. Why? I know you and your friends were all involved in the war, helping Dumbledore and everything. I didn't. My parents sent me to Sweden after I finished my newts. They were worried about me. They wanted me out of the way. You remember what things were like? Yes, Remus wanted to say. Yes, I bloody remember. Sometimes I wake up and it's like it's still happening. And with us being purebloods, I think they were worried I'd have to pick a side. So they sent me away. We have family in Gothenburg, and I got my qualification in magical finance. Right. Remus nodded. He really needed to talk about something else. Good for you, Chris. So, um, are you in Soho often? Christopher turned crimson again and looked down at his mug of coffee. Only, only sometimes. Honestly, I, I just heard about that place and I thought I'd take a look. I didn't, I don't want you to think. You know you ought to be careful, Remus said, lowering his voice in case any of the cafe patrons were listening in. There's this illness the muggles are getting. I'm not sure how much you lot know about it, but it's really serious. Like I said, Christopher said, I barely go there, really. Just stupid curiosity. Remus felt a twinge of guilt for making Christopher feel bad. If Grant had taught him anything, it was that you should never add to anyone's personal shame. It was a wasted emotion anyway. No need to make it worse. There's nothing wrong with being curious, Remus said gently. Lots of people go to those places. To you? Christopher looked up at him. No, Remus said a bit too quickly. Uh, I mean, you know, I was never very sociable. Oh, of course. I can imagine, after everything that happened. Remus didn't want to get into that, so he changed the subject. Seeing anyone? He asked. Got a boyfriend? Christopher shook his head. No, it's difficult, you know. The job I have, my family. Things have been... Well, there's been a fair bit of trial and error in that respect. Remus really wanted to squeeze his hand over the table, but it really wasn't the place. He tilted his head sympathetically. It will get better, Chris. Christopher looked at him with a resigned smile. Hmm, yeah, I remember you saying something like that before, at school. Someone for everyone. Well, there is, Remus nodded encouragingly. More than one person, even. I don't know, Christopher sighed. I don't know whether it's healthy to think like that. There are so many factors to consider and I don't... I don't think it works like in books. I don't think everyone has that experience. That was a difficult thing to hear. Remus didn't know what to say, really, and felt weirdly self-conscious and naive. Certainly, Remus did not glamorise romance anymore, if he ever had at all. Love had beaten the shit out of him on more than one occasion. But it had also been the only thing worth living for. It had lifted him, protected him, and kept him human. He had a sudden longing to see Grant, and wondered if he'd be home yet. Don't feel sorry for me, Christopher said briskly, checking his pocket watch. I have a nice enough time. I like my work. I make plenty of money. And when I get a free evening, I still, you know, I'm able to enjoy myself once in a while. I just see it as a treat, rather than a lifestyle. Actually, he leaned in a little. I have a flat, in Kensington, for when I work late, and I don't want to apparate all the way home. It's nice there, if you'd like to see it. He raised an eyebrow suggestively. Remus's mouth went dry, and he swallowed, flustered. Um, nice of you to offer, really, but I'd better be getting home. I've got someone waiting. Oh. Christopher sat up straighter, withdrawing. His face seemed to close up. You've got someone? Yeah. 
for a few years now. Almost six, he realised. Longer than he'd had Sirius, if he ever really had Sirius. Well, good for you then. Look, I'd better be going, Remus. It was very nice to see you again. Christopher stood up and extended a formal hand for Remus to shake. We ought to have a proper catch-up one of these days. Let me know if you're ever in Diagon Alley. Perhaps I'll arrange lunch. Okay. Remus nodded, shaking his hand. He knew he would never be in Diagon Alley, and as Christopher didn't give him any contact details, Remus assumed the invitation was merely politeness. He didn't miss pure-blood hypocrisy. Remus walked home quickly, ignoring the ache in his hip, and was relieved beyond belief to find Grant already there, in the kitchen. Watch a boffin, he grinned. How's the museum? Good, thanks. Interesting. Reckon I should take some of the lads there on a trip. Hmm, if I can get it past the governor. He held up two tins. Beans on toast or spaghetti hoops on toast? Whichever you'd prefer, Remus said, watching him. Grant looked at them both cheerfully. Hoops, then. With lots of Worcestershire, yeah? Sounds perfect, Remus breathed. (laughs) Perfect, Grant chuckled. You must be hungry. No, I just... just missed you, that's all. I've only been at work. I know. Darth sod. Grant shook his head, still smiling, turning his back to open the cutlery drawer and find the tin opener. Remus crossed the room quickly and hugged him, wrapping his arms around Grant's waist, pulling him in and inhaling the scent of him. Grant set down the tin opener carefully and hugged Remus back, rubbing his arms. You are right, sweetheart? Mm Mm-hmm, Remus said into his neck. Just glad you're here. End of chapter 179